Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is a video, like I wish you could see. I'm sitting on the floor because I'm surrounded by books that I'm gonna be talking about today. This is a video that has involved like the most prep for me, possibly like more prep than any other video I've ever filmed. Uh, Tolkien is sitting slightly off camera, grooming himself there. Maybe he'll make a show yet. He usually likes to steal the spotlight. Today we are going to be talking about creating a DIY literature degree. I mentioned this in a video a couple of videos back that I was kind of working on this and quite a few people said they wanted me to share it and so I've been working on that, hence why so much prep. I mean I kind of would have done this for myself anyway, but I tried to make it a little bit more co cohesive and understandable since I'm sharing it with others. So somehow I made it through my university career um, with a minor in English with only taking one English course. And I'm kind of glad for it because I was not ready. I don't know, maybe I just wasn't in the mental space when I was in university. I was there to check a box. I wasn't there to like enjoy learning. And I think I'm in that space now. And so I'm going to make up for it by creating my own literature degree. So I wanted to share how I've come up with this. And then I'm going to be sharing my like year one. This is all super flexible. It's DIY. Things might change. I'm not holding myself to like a calendar or any particular anything. I'm just giving myself like a few ideas and going from there. <laughs> Although when you look at the books surrounding me, it's maybe more than a few ideas. Okay, so this kind of revolves around this book that I picked up from the thrift store the other day. I shared this in my Light Academia video. Uh, this is like an anthology of English literature. It so nicely has literature broken up by time periods and I was like, okay, I'm going to use this for my DIY degree. I actually think I needed to use this book in university anyway. I think this is a common text for um, profs to pull from, so it works out. So we're going to start with my outline of how I'm going to create each year of this degree and then I'm going to share my first year. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by sharing um, a few different things. I'm going to put up some of this information that I'm sharing in a format that you can take a screenshot. I thought about making a printable but I kind of just got too lazy so after I talk for a bit there's going to be some information on the screen. Feel free to take a screenshot in case you want to do this for yourself. And keep in mind this is super flexible. Change things as needed. So in order to make this video I have notes on my phone because I've written all this down for myself. My whole outline is on Notion and my like my how I'm going to create my degree plus my first year information. I've put it all on here. Where do I begin? I think I want to begin with a few disclaimers because we are going to be diving into like older works of literature as we go about this degree. One thing I want to note is maybe a good idea, and I'm saying this for myself, I'm allowing for myself, is to start with abridged versions of books. Now, any university prof might be like yelling at me right now, I don't know. Um, we are currently using this book in our homeschool, A World Full of Dickens Stories. This is eight beloved classics retold for children. And then there's also like the Osborne Complete Dickens. I think if you really want to get the most out of a story, a classic, it's a good idea to know what the story actually is before you get into it. Contrary to my like mystery, suspense, enjoying personality, you actually do need to know the story a bit and reading an abridged version can help with that. Now I'll let Tolkien out and we'll get into the actual outline. I'm sure he's just gonna be meowing to get back in in a few minutes, but oh well. Okay, so here is my outline of how to create your own literature degree. If this feels a little bit like too theoretical, just stick with me. I'm going to share my first year and hopefully that will help as well. So the first thing you're going to do is pick a time period that you want to study. And I've written down that I'm going to read four plus, I'm leaving myself room, different time periods, more books will be easier and some, you know, I'll go on the lower end, four plus books from that time period. And I need to and to note to myself, I can return to this time period again. Once again, a little bit later, once you see all the books that are around me, you'll realize why I'm saying this, because I will have a tendency to want to read every single book from that time period. And I'm saying, read four to six, maybe more if you really want, 
but like don't feel like you have to read every book from that time period. Remember that. Okay, so read some books from the time period. The second thing you're going to do is read some like critical texts or like watch some YouTube videos that kind of dive deep into those books. Um, something that takes it just from like, okay, I read the story to like, okay, now I understand some of the themes and some more of what's going on in the story. Then I'm going to be reading six plus, actually, I really, these are six plus poems or from six plus different poets from that time period. I really enjoy poetry, so I will probably go like way above this, but for those that don't really enjoy poetry, I'm putting a number down there. Try six or more if you want to. Um, find different poets from the time period that you pick. I'll tell you all about the time periods shortly. And then read some critical texts about those different pieces of poetry. So the first thing you're going to do is pick your time period, but what are the time periods? Here we go. I've got it written down. The first one is the Middle Ages, which is like from the beginning of English literature to 1485. Now, I'm mostly getting these numbers from this book. Uh, then we've got the 16th century, 1485 to 1603. The early 17th century, 1603 to 1660. The Restoration and the 18th century, 1660 to 1785. Romantic literature, which is 1785 to 1836. Victorian literature, 1837 to 1901, and then we've got the 20th century. So those are your different time periods. You're going to pick one of those. You're going to read four plus books from that time period, read some critical texts, read six plus poems, read some critical texts. That's the first thing we're going to do with our time period. The second thing we're going to do is pick a specialty. Now, this was fun. I did some deep diving, you guys. I was on different university websites looking at different syllabi, syllabus, syllabi, different syllabi. Some people have like the entire list of like what they're going to study, um, like the books they're going to read, the essays you need to write. Some universities have a lot of information. I will leave some of my favorites linked below that had a ton of different information for you. Um, but if you have a university near you, just type in like that university and like an English major and see if you can come up with the different classes that they have. So we're gonna pick a specialty and we're gonna read some works in relation to that specialty. I did not put a number on this because I really think it depends what your specialty is. Some will have a lot more options than others and you might start it and realize like, I'm not really interested so you know you just read a few or you might realize like you really are interested so you want to dive deeper just play it by ear um, and then you're going to want to read some critical texts or watch some videos about that specialty or about those each of those books that you read so i have a list here again this is like just the tip of the iceberg on specialty options i just wrote down a few ideas there are so so many so this is just some options. We've got gothic literature. I was so tempted to make this my specialty for this year, but it's uh, decided not to. You could do like the history of the book or like manuscript studies. I've got short stories slash shorter fiction, indigenous literature, translated works, or you could do like just f like translated works from French or from a different language. Um, literature by women, fairy tales, poetry. Okay. This is one that I found. So the University of Saskatchewan is the university that I went to and a lot of them have their syllabi, I still don't, that would be plural, right? I don't know, um, online. And this one was a professor from the University of Saskatchewan. This is one of her specialties and I had to quote it, like copy it down word for word because this is the best. This is her specialty. History of cy cyborgs or present day representations of humans as machines in literature, cultural studies, and science and medicine. So you could just research cyborgs at, in literature. That's kind of cool. Sherlock in the Multiverse. That was a University of Pennsylvania undergraduate course that I found. The course description was pretty cool. That's like a fun one to do. I love Sherlock. Um, there's crime and detective fiction, there's like the golden age of mysteries, there's mythology, there's so many ideas. Like I said, I just scratch the tip of the iceberg I think as I go deeper into this whole DIY literature degree idea, more ideas are going to come to me. Yeah, like just a few here, but I had to stop somewhere so I'm stopping there. 
that's a few ideas. So you've got your time period, you've got your area of specialty expertise that you're going to be an expert in eventually here. And then the third thing you're going to do is pick a literary mentor. Now this is just to pick an author and read a bunch of their works. Um, I think this will be the best if this author writes fiction and nonfiction, um, but they don't have to. It's, it's your degree, you know, you can pass yourself if you want to. And then once again, like read some like critical texts on the works that you read from your mentor. So you can just pick anyone. <laughs> so many different options. And then if you want to take it a step further, you can look to see what different courses online are asking for, for essays and different assignments they have going on and complete those just for fun. I'm probably not going to take it to that level. And one thing I didn't even touch on would be like writing. Um, that could be like an area of specialty for sure is just like focusing on the creative writing or writing poetry or a specific kind of poetry or like I said, lots of ideas. So that's an overview of what my DIY literature degree looks like. Now we are going to dive into what I'm going to be doing for my first year. You guys, so many books here. I just need to change my battery and then we're going to dive in. Okay, so for year one, I have decided, and I think this is booktube influenced, I've decided to study the Victorian period because when I was looking through my shelves at the different classics that I have on them, they were mostly Victorian, and I think it's a booktube influence thing. During Victober, everyone's reading a lot of Victorian literature, and I just keep accumulating more from that time period. So I want to make a dent in the books that I own from that time period. So once again, I have a Notion page all for this year one degree that I'm making. So I have lots of different possibilities. First of all, I'm currently reading Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. So I've kind of got a start in this already. I'm not super far yet, but this is gonna be one book that I'm going to definitely be reading since I've started it. Um, I tried to stick, or I'm going to try to stick to books that I own since I have so many. But if there are books from the Victorian time period that you think are amazing that I should maybe check out, uh, let me know. I also have Elizabeth Gaskell's Mary Barton. I feel like I also had a copy of Cranford somewhere, but maybe I don't. Um, so I've got those two by her. And the reason I had these Dickens books here was partly because we're doing this in our homeschool, but also because I'm going to be reading some Dickens and I thought it might help me because I've struggled with some of his books before. I really like some of them. But then other ones, not so much. So I thought I would read some abridged versions and then dive into his books. This is the ones that I own that I have not read. I'm definitely not going to be reading all of these this year. I've got The Old Curiosity Shop, Great Expectations, which I have started multiple times and probably only got like 10% in. Um, man, I need to finish that one sometime. The Pickwick Papers, I personally love this edition. It is the Penguin Library Orange Spine, but it's like a really old one, nice and floppy. David Copperfield, I have two editions of this. The other edition I have is a little floppier, a little nicer. I mean, it's older. This one looks nice, but there's that one. And then I've got Nicholas Nickleby, which this is a terrible cover. I have no idea what that story is about, but there's that one. So I want to read at least one Dickens book possibly more because I have so many of his. Then I have George Eliot. I own The Mill on the Floss and Silas Mariner, as well as there's some short stories, which I'm going to get into yet. Um, Middlemarch I have actually read by her. And I definitely need to read some Bronte. So I have two Charlotte Bronte books. I have Villette and I have Shirley that I have not read. I would like to read like one from each of these authors. Is that, is that asking too much? I've got Wilkie Collins' The Moonstone, but I've heard really good things about The Woman in White, but I don't own that one. So if I can't find my, like get my hands on that one, then I'm gonna read this one, but I don't know, I kinda wanna read that one. Thomas Hardy, I've yet to read, but I have Jude the Obscure and Tess of the Dubervilles. I hear I'm not really gonna like Hardy, or at least not this one, I don't remember. Um, but I've had these books for a few years, so I should probably read them. So I think those are my like, 
oh, how many authors was that? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six different authors. I would like to read at least one book by each of those authors. I think that's possible. Then I want to read some short stories and plays. And so this is where this George Eliot, there's two short stories in here, The Lifted Veil and Brother Jacob. So I want to read one or both of those. And then, like I said, I have this huge Norton anthology. I also have this one, which is like the second half of this one. It's split up. It's, it's the same thing, but it's just the ending. So it seems like, why do I have both? But at the same time, if I'm reading, I want to be reading from here if possible. So in here I have um, Elizabeth Gaskell's The Old Nurse's Story and Bernard Shaw's Mrs. Warren's Profession. So I want to read those short stories. Actually, the last one is a play. And then I also have Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest. Um, that is a play that I want to read. And then I don't know if these other plays, yeah, these other plays must be by him as well. The other ones I may or may not read. So those are my short stories and plays. Then I want to do some children's literature in from the Victorian era. This one I struggled with a bit because I've either read, I've read quite a few, or the other ones that are like more popular I don't care to read. Like Alice is an Adventures in Wonderland, you guys. That's just so not for me. But where did I put that stack? I found a few different things I would like to read. This one I have read actually. We read quite frequently in our homeschool. This is a book of nonsense. This is Edward Lear's Limericks. I would like to read more by Edward Lear, so I might do that. Robert Louis Stevenson. So he wrote some children's poetry, which I also have read some of, but not a ton. So this is A Child's Garden of Verses. I think I'll go through, read more of that. He also wrote Kidnapped, which I've owned for a while and have not read. And this is quite short for a classic because it's a children's classic probably. So I should be able to read that one quite easily. And then I found that I have um, Andrew Lang's The Green Fairy Book. I mean, I knew I had it, but this was published during the Victorian era. So these are fairy tales, um, which I think will just give like, round this out a little bit, make it a little bit different. So I'm excited about that. Then for poetry, I have owned this book for a long time. This is the Poems and Plays of Robert Browning. Actually, I didn't even realize there was plays in here too. Um, so I'm going to read some from here. And then most of the other poems and plays are from this book. Slash, this one is so much easier to hold. So in here I have Alfred Lord Tennyson. Um, there's also Elizabeth Barrett Browning. I don't really want to read hers. I've, I started hers. I didn't like hers. So at least I know that already. Um, Matthew Arnold. Christina Rossetti, I really do like her poetry. I would like to purchase a collection of her poetry because the few that I've read in different anthologies that I have, I've really enjoyed. Gerard Manley Hopkins, never heard of him, but he's in here. Thomas Hardy is also in here. I did read a poetry book by Thomas Hardy earlier this year. Wasn't a huge fan, but I'm gonna see if there's if I like the ones that are in here. Um, the Brontes. Okay, I need to get my hands on a poetry book by the Brontes. I love Emily's poetry that I have read and the other girls I've enjoyed. So I would love to get a collection of their poetry. Um, I can't remember if there was actually any of the Brontes in here. No, they're not in here at all, unfortunately. So I have to figure out a way to get my hands on that. And then John Clare, also not in here, but I've read a few of his in different bind-ups and I've enjoyed his. So those are some of the poets I want to read from. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight if you count the Brontes as one poet, which I wouldn't. Definitely more than the six, but I know that that will be interesting to me because I like poetry. Then, because I'm choosing the Victorian era, I also thought about reading this book, Queen Victoria by Lucy Worsley, because um, I thought it would be interesting to read about the time period, not necessarily just stuff set in the time period, or that was written in the time period, I mean. So yeah, this is also gonna go on my stack here. <laughs> Then for my specialty, like I said, I was really tempted to do gothic literature, but I decided not to because I didn't have a ton on my shelves. So I thought I would try to stick with what I do own. And what do I own a lot of? That is golden age mystery books. <laughs> so like this is, these two shelves are Agatha Christie that I have not read yet. I also have The Complete Miss Marple, which I think I was reading in order, so I'm partway through. I have the complete Hercule short stories, and this was short stories as well. And then I have 
I have some biographies of Agatha Christie, which would be good, um, and her autobiography, plus her complete secret notebooks that talk about her like planning of her mystery stories. So I have lots of options with that one author alone. That really could have been my specialty, but it wasn't. Because I also had all of these Golden Age mystery writers. And Golden Age mysteries, I think they're books published in the 1920s and 30s mostly. And so a lot of mine are from our British, except this one is not. I don't know where he's actually from. But I've got The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett. I bought a bunch of these one time when I went to a used bookstore. And <laughs> this one, Georgette Hare, is also a author from the Golden Age era. This cover is kind of terrible, but I'll try not to judge the book by that. Another one of hers that I have is They Found Him Dead. This one was Death in the Stocks. Dorothy L. Sayers is one that I want to read more of. I forgot to grab one of her books. So I've read the first book in her Lord Peter Wimsley series, and then I have this bind up that has more of them, but does not have them in order, so I gotta keep that in mind. I also have In the Teeth of the Evidence by her. I'm not sure on the order of these. Another author from this time period was Josephine Tay. So I have The Daughter of Time. This one is super popular. Miss Pym Disposes and The Man in the Queue. These covers are terrible. I'm trying not to judge books by them. Also, Patricia Wentworth, Grey Mask. Oh man, I just, yeah, wow. Okay, interesting. And then I have G.K. Chesterton's Father Brown Essential Tales. I started this a few years ago, read a few stories, so I'm partway through this. Can continue with these. These ones are just mystery stories based on Father Brown being like the detective. And then I have this bind up of short stories. These are locked room mysteries, so these are not all from the Golden Age detective story era but they do have quite a few in here that are. So there's that. And because I'm talking about so many detective stories, I feel like I didn't mention Sherlock, like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle at all for my Victorian era, but I've read all the Sherlock and I have yet to get my hands on some of his other works, though I'd like to. Um, so there's a few in here that I wanna read. And then when I looked up a, a list of authors, golden age of detective fiction authors, P.G. Woodhouse was not on the list, but I want to read some of his anyway. I don't know if he technically counts, but I'm counting him. Once again, I'll pass myself for my degree, so it's all good. So this <laughs> is just some of the reading for the like specialty section. And then we will go on to my literary mentor. So I've decided to go with C.S. Lewis for my literary mentor because he wrote such a variety of different things. Um, he's got children's literature, he's got poetry, he's got essays, he's got books, nonfiction books, he's got uh, an adult science fiction series, so many different things. Plus, I am just embarrassed with how many of his books that I own that I have not read. So the first thing I'm going to be doing, or one of the things I'm definitely going to be doing, is finishing the Chronicles of Narnia. Honestly, I don't even remember how far I've gotten. I do not think I finished the series, but I might have, but I'm not confident. So I want to start from the beginning, or read through. That really shouldn't take me that long. Then I also want to finish the uh, Space Trilogy of his. I read this first one a while ago, which it looks like, well, why would that be hard to commit to? But they get so progressively thicker and they are so classic science fiction, which is just not my thing, um, but I want to finish it. So I'm going to get the next two books in the series, read them. I have a couple books coming from Book Outlet. One of them I'm so excited about. Well, both of them actually. Um, one is it's called On Poetry and the other one is called On... what was it called? I wrote it down. On Other Worlds. So I think that's like about fantasy stories. Oh, and the other one was On Stories. I think he also has a poetry one. But I didn't grab it. I also want to read some of his poetry, which I don't have my hands on yet. I would like to reread the screw tape letters. I have an annotated edition that I've never read, so I think that would be good. I want to read Till We Have Faces. This is a myth retold. 
I'm not really into myths, so I don't know if I would like this one, but I'm going to give that one a try. And then I have his signature classics. This one also has the screw tape letters in it. But I definitely, definitely need to read Mere Christianity. I've started it. I'm, I've read a chapter? Only a chapter? No, wait. Well, I'm on page 70. So, yeah, I think I need to start it over and read it all. And then we'll see what else I can get to. Um, I would like to ideally read them all. But I feel like that's a little bit unrealistic. Although I could carry him over for quite some time. He has so many books that I didn't even know that he had. So many different essays and things that have turned into books. So I could keep going for a while for him with his writing. Although I will say my top priorities are finishing this series, finishing this series, and then reading Mere Christianity. Those three I feel like I have to do. The rest will be like icing on the cake which it might be a lot of icing if I read a lot of them. So there you have it. That is how I want to organize my DIY literature degree and what I plan on doing for my first year. Uh, and yeah, like I said, year is flexible, but that's a, that's a lot. Um, let me know if you guys want to join in with this, if this was helpful at all, what you want to study. I would just love to chat in the comments with you. Thanks for being here.